This is the Bandelier National Monument Travel Guide providing helpful information for visitors to this national monument near Los Alamos, New Mexico. Bandelier National Monument is over 33,000 acres of rugged and beautiful canyon and mesa along with 11,000 years of human history which include petroglyphs, dwellings carved in rock cliffs and standing masonry walls. In this video, we'll be showing the main area of Bandelier National Monument, Frijoles Canyon. Look out for our next video on Sinkawi. Welcome to HipFig. If you're a travel enthusiast, then join our community by subscribing to this channel. This is the Los Alamos Travel Guide series. This episode is the Bandelier National Monument in Los Alamos, New Mexico, helpful travel guide for visitors. Bandelier National Monument has several areas to visit, but the main area is Friolis Canyon. The Bandelier National Monument Frijoles Canyon area is where the visitor center is located at 15 Entrance Road, Los Alamos, New Mexico. Take the New Mexico 502 West exit, then keep left. We drove our rental car from Santa Fe on a gorgeous sunny early morning to Los Alamos. Although we didn't use our GPS, getting there was pretty easy. The roads are wide and there aren't many cars which make it for a leisurely drive looking at the gorgeous mesas. There are plenty of brown direction signs on the road for Bandelier National Monument. Use the right two lanes to take the New Mexico for ramp. Continue for 13 miles. It's a good idea to get an early start in the summer to avoid the heat if you want to do any kind of hiking. On the way to Bandelier, there is a city called White Rock. You can find restaurants here and a visitor center that's located along the main road at 115 on New Mexico Drive. State Road 4. The White Rock uh, Visitor Center is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. mid-May to mid-October and from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. mid-October to mid-May. It's usually open seven days a week and open most holidays. The White Rock Visitor Center offers restrooms, a small gift shop, and you can catch the shuttle to Bandelier Monument for Holis Canyon. Bandelier operates a required weekday shuttle service mid-May through mid-October uh, due to the limited parking at Friolis Canyon. Between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. shuttles run approximately every 30 minutes on weekdays and every 20 minutes on weekends. Bandelier also offers a free weekend and holiday shuttle which is an option for weekend visitors, not a requirement. If you plan to drive up to Friolis Canyon like we did, visit early in the morning or late afternoon. The busiest times are usually 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The parking lot does fill up pretty fast between these times, especially in the several months. Uh, and when parking lots are full, vehicles can be turned away. You can also drive into any of the other areas of the park any time of the day, including Juniper Campground, uh, Sunkawi, and the many trails outside of Frijoles Canyon. Remember the park closes at sunset, so plan to leave before that time. Once we arrived at the entrance of Bandelier National Monument, there's an entrance fee which needs to be paid at the Adobe Entrance uh, Building. The passes are all valid for seven days and include access to all areas of the park, including Sankawi. Entrance passes do not cover camping fees. A car fee with all passengers is $25. A motorcycle pass, which includes up to two people, is $20, and those cycling or walking in who are older than 16 is $15. All people 16 and under are free. There are several overlooks driving down to the canyon. 
We recommend stopping at Frijoles Canyon Overlook for a wide shot of the canyon. Driving down to the canyon, you, we saw lots of terrain change with more trees. When we reached the Frijoles Canyon Visitor Center parking lot, it was already full. If you come during the busy time, you might consider taking the shuttle from the White Rock Visitor Center, which has a stop right in front of this visitor center. The Bandelier National Monument Visitor Center operates from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. In the Visitor Center building, there are restrooms outside, water faucets, and inside there's an air-conditioned museum and information center. The Visitor Center also has a park store and restaurant um, on the right side. They're open from 11 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Tuesday through Friday. From the visitor center, outside there's a large shaded courtyard that extends to the main paved trail. This paved trail extends through the campground, visitor center, and a picnic area. Access to the archaeological sites is by foot. The main loop trail is an easy trail until the end when you get to the cliff dwellings. The main trail, also known as the Pueblo Loop Trail, is 1.4 mile loop trail. Portions of the trail allow access by wheelchair or stroller. After walking about halfway through the main uh, loop trail, we had the option of walking back to the visitor center or continuing another half mile to the alcove house. The alcove house, formerly known as a ceremonial cave, is located 140 feet above the floor of Friolis Canyon. What makes this section of the National Monument special is that it's the ancestral and traditional lands of at least 23 tribal nations including the Hopi, Apache, Navajo, Sandia, Isleta, and Laguna, just to name a few. By 1550, the ancestral Pueblo people had moved from this area to the Pueblos along the Rio Grande because um, the land could no longer support them due to a severe drought. The first area you see is the village on the canyon floor, which was probably ideal for summer. It's closer to Frijoles Creek and the crops would have existed on the canyon floor. The canyon floor of the village, you'll see the big kiva and the longhouse, which are all made from the volcanic tough rock in the canyon. We continue to walk to the alcove house, formerly known as the ceremonial cave, which is 140 feet above the floor of the Friolis Canyon. The walk up has steep stairs and can be hard in the heat. Make sure to bring plenty of water and take your time going up. Once home to approximately 25 ancestral Pebble people, the elevated side is now reached by four wooden ladders and a number of stone stairs. In the wintertime, because the caveats face south, the canyon wall would catch a lot of sunlight and is typically 13 degrees warmer than the canyon floor. In 2001, the Cavades in Los Alamos were listed among the most endangered places in New Mexico by the New Mexico Heritage Preservation Alliance. The park allows you to climb some wooden ladders into many of the cavates or cave dwellings. There is an additional ma uh, mile round trip that leads to the alcove house which is reached by climbing four ladders and a number of stone stairs. In the cavates you can see um, blackened ceilings which is due to suit uh, fire uh, from fire and that they think it's done uh, purposely to seal the crumbly volcanic tuff uh, so that it doesn't keep falling on the floor. Did you know there were actually 245 ground level rooms in the village? They say that some of it was for guests or almost like a hotel too. Um, you can see in the longhouse for instance rooms stacked two or three stories high um, with the same uh, architectural style used um, by the Tuyuani. But unlike longhouses, uh, they support holes for roof beams um, so that the rooms can be stacked. A guided ranger tour is available for the main loop. 
um, the topics will vary. The, it's usually about an hour and a half and it starts at the visitor center. Please check with them for information. If interested, there's also 70 miles of backcountry trails available for day or uh, overnight foot trail. There's also a um, guided tour for the backcountry with a ranger check at the visitor center. You can also pick up a $2 trail guide at the park store to learn more about the sites along the trail that have descriptions um, of the stops that are numbered 1 through 21. This attraction will take you two or more hours depending on your interest. You can also combine your visit with the Valles Caldera National Preserve or the Manhattan Project National Historic Park. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.